Well, a very good morning to you. There's been a light dusting of snow overnight. It's been very, very cold over the past few days. And I'm um, just going to have a little bit of a walk around and let you have a look. The daffodils are still showing and the muscari are. So I've been outside working. <laughs> Give me a challenge. You know, the colder it gets, the more I wrap up warm and get out there and uh, work. So I've been planting and I've been taking a lot of the shrubs and plants that I had in pots that had outgrown the pots and I've put them into the ground. So I'm going to show you first of all just um, the new view that's opened up since I have taken down the old pampas grass which was just over here and I'll just show you that now in a moment. We'll just walk here to the Laurel Arch. I'm going to turn around now and have a look. So there you go, there's actually a far better view. Um, the vista takes you all the way through to Kilronan Mountain there. Um, that pampas grass had got huge, most of it was dead and um, it served its purpose uh, when I planted it 15 and a half years ago. Uh, you might be able to see the tiny version of it on that photograph that I took with my mother in it, which is both on Facebook and on Twitter. Um, but anyway, 15 and a half years down the line, it's now past its best, and uh, it's going to make room for something else. So, possibly a shrub. Not too sure what kind of a shrub yet, but I'm sure I'll be inspired at some point. So now you begin to see this wonderful woodland. Um, in fact, when I took that photograph of my mother, she was standing... Let me see now. Um, just come round here. And you see where the little archway is there. She was standing between the archway and what is uh, the big beech tree now. So, of course, if she was standing there now, um, you wouldn't be able to see much behind her, just a blur of trees. I think then what you could see was what had been uh, the rushy land, which I had spent a long time strimming. And then I mowed that, and so I turned it into a fairly grassy um, field. And that's then um, when I started to plant. Of course, I had to keep the mowing going. <laughs> that was that was years and years of mowing and uh, keeping the grass down so everything else could grow. Very important because grass and rushes cut off the life support to many of the young trees and shrubs trying to grow. So it's very important to keep that grass and rush down, which is very laborious <coughs> and very hard work. <coughs> However, it's kept me fit. So um, let me just take you over here. So the tunnel is covered with snow this morning. There's a little bit of a thaw going on, as you can see from the drips coming down from the arch here. And the birds are singing and the shoots are still popping up everywhere. And the flowers are coming up and buds are forming. So spring cannot be stopped, even with the severest setbacks. And you can see there's this beautiful haze. There's like a haze of green happening everywhere where buds are beginning to form and open up. It's a very magical time of year. It's a very special time of year. And no wonder my ancestors celebrated it with the festival of Imok. It was a great welcome, welcome back to the rising of the Earth Goddess. So 
So also, um, I've been juice fasting. So this is now, I think it's day four. Day four. Um, which has been wonderful because uh, I've had quite a lot of inflammation due to arthritis, which I've had from the age of 27. Um, and I managed to keep it in check with juice fasting, um, usually around this time of the year, and then also during the summer and sometimes into the autumn as well. But um, I don't know how long it's going to be for. It's really until the inflammation settles. And yesterday I remarked that I was able to get my rings on, which was a sure sign that the inflammation was subsiding. So, and of course it gives me a lot of energy. It's amazing how it works. Uh, and when people say, do you take smoothies? No, a, smooth, a smoothie and a juice are two different things. Um, I juice. So, it's really looking wonderful. It's amazing just, I mean, like look at the buds here on the black currant. Now I've got to cut back that Lissestria Formosa there in order to get some new growth on it for this year. And I still have some pruning to do on the apple tree there, that one. Um, whether I'll get time today or not, I don't know. I've got to take my car into the garage because it's been playing up on me. I think I've got to get a new wheel bearing or something on it. It's a pretty, pretty bad sound coming from it anyway. Right, and I'll show you what I planted yesterday. I'll we'll go down this way. You can just hear the crunch of the snow underneath. And I'm looking here at these beautiful flowering buds opening on the flowering current, the ribes. I think this time of year excites me more than any other time because it's just filled with promise and uh, the small setbacks which seem to come and go um, are just to be expected. That's how spring has always been. Just looking up there as well at the beautiful buds and it's just beautiful. So. Up here, in this space, I planted the Fatinia, the Red Robin. Here we go. Now that was in a pot, I'll show you the pot in a moment. And uh, it had outgrown the pot, the roots were starting to come through. So I thought, okay, I'm going to free up all these pots now and uh, pot them up with some nice summery things. So, I've got two more pots of, uh, these are both asters, but they're different ones that I've grown from seed. This is the upright aster, which grows into almost like a small tree or a very large shrub. And this is the Cotoneaster, um, which likes to grow up along walls or will grow freestanding um, into a beautiful kind of arching bush which is gorgeous. And there you can see two blue pots, a light blue and a dark blue, which have been freed up. And uh, I'm going to be repotting or potting up some nice plants in those. So we'll have a little dander around the front of the cottage. I'm just having a little look at all that I've all that I've done thus far. See the raindrops there just on the just on the hawthorn. Now there's more snow promised and we've been given I think it's a yellow um, weather warning. 
Well, that's okay. As I say, it's only ever to be expected at this time of year. Yeah, I've potted up um, this Mahonia. So I'm going to grow that on the pot until it's much bigger and then plant it out. This is what I've done all the way down the almost 16 years of Bealtaine. Um Do you remember when these were in pots? Look how big they are now. <laughs> There's something else there in the pot. That's a little box. Not so little. So that will be planted out as well. It's actually a lovely way of gardening because you get to appreciate the plants when they're small and then um, when you plant them out then they're quite substantial. Now look, look at the aquilegia there. Can you see just coming up. Got lots and lots of aquilegia coming up all over the place. Now that's um, a cordyline, which of course, do you remember when the cordyline's over there, those two, were this size and in pots. So um, that's almost ready for planting out. That's at least doubled its size since I put it in that pot. And it's also got a little bit of Jacob's Ladder growing up in there because, you see, I used the compost from my compost heap, which is absolutely filled with seeds. Because that's what you get when you cold compost. Now, I need to do a little bit of cutting back of the bamboo, which, again, makes fantastic food for the earth. Um, there's something else in the pot which I'm going to be planting out and this is a purple beech and it's got some honesty growing around it and again because I've used compost from my compost heap and um, this little Serbian spruce now I planted the other one I think I've, yeah two of them I planted the other one down on the other side of the fairy wood I did that uh, day before yesterday I think There's the sun shining. I mean, this is like I say, <laughs> dipping in and out of the weather, dipping in and out of the season. You look out the window in the morning, you think, Oh, has winter come back? But then you hear the bird song, and you realize, Of course, it hasn't come back. This is spring, and this is how spring goes. She can never quite make up her mind whether she's coming or going. <laughs> There's a bird up there. Wow, what a beautiful sight. There's a few pots along here now that I have to sort. This little birch tree is coming on rather well. So I've got a big pot of bamboo there, which might be a wee bit difficult to get out, but I'll have to have a go at it. Um, and then I've also got this beautiful camellia, which I'm not going to be moving. But I will have to bring some big stones around and um, put some stones around the bottom because that little half barrel now has gone to pot, as they say. <laughs> Reminds me of my mother. She used to say things like, oh, it's gone to pot. Or he's gone to pot or she's gone. I don't know what it meant. It was something kind of derogatory. Uh, but you can see all the buds on the camellia. Now that promises a wealth of flowers. So I must get those stones around it. Now there's another 
plant tree that I have to part up sorry plant out um, which is a lovely one but I think that's outgrown that part there see it's happened very quickly plants like to be in pots I think it gives them a feeling of security so they do rather well and then you can also of course um, be 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 very direct with any um, fertilizer you know that you put around them because it stays in the pot it's not going to get washed anywhere you can see the snow now on Kironan mountain which is beautiful and all the way along the valley that valley takes you all the way up to Sligo like that's the road that I follow to Sligo and I go up that way but look at this look at the beautiful Beautiful morning. There's a wee birdie up there just looking down at me. Yeah. Little birds all the way through the trees. And the sun now it's quite strong. One of my little feeders there. Look. But look down around it. Look at the aquilegia. Little clumps of it coming up through the gravel. Seems to like the gravel. So, on this beautiful, beautiful morning here in the west of Ireland at Bealtaine Cottage, I wish you all a lovely day, a happy day, a productive day, a calm day. And, you know, don't angst too much about the things that you cannot change. I had this little tribulation yesterday on Facebook. I keep trying with Facebook um, because I know that so many people actually enjoy going on there and seeing the photographs and, you know, I do little live streams and stuff, you know. And it's very much appreciated by so many people. But there are fundamentalists, and of course I hear you say, oh, you mean Christian fundamentalists. No, I don't. No, I don't. I mean fundamentalists. You find them in all walks of life. Um, Christian fundamentalists are very easy to, you know, deal with. Um, it's the fundamentalists, you know, who are political fundamentalists, environmental fundamentalists. And they want to argue and they want to pick the bones off you and they want to just keep picking and picking and I suppose they're sat there, you know, keyboard warriors, not doing an awful lot, um, quite impotent in their own lives in terms of their willingness to change anything. So they just, um, you know become quite radical and non-forgiving and black and white and fundamentalist and people like me I suppose are are just there to be derided and attacked so I keep blocking and banning goodness me I don't know how many people have blocked and banned on Facebook <laughs> And it gets to me for a short while and then afterwards I think, oh, this is just ridiculous. So then I take a few days, I sort of uh, don't bother with Facebook for a while and then I go back on. And You know, because at the end of the day, my personality is that I just don't let anything or anyone get me down. Because I am a born optimist and I'm also... Um, a very passionate person. I'm very passionate about what I do. And I'm very passionate about sharing what I do. And uh, I know that it actually brings, uh, you know, a lot of hope to people. Um, so I'm quite happy to, to, to share all this and to keep sharing. And believe you me, um, I won't be, I won't be put off, and uh, what's that old saying? Don't let the buckers get you down. <laughs> well, I don't. <laughs> I don't. No. So, um, 
going to get myself into the shower now and uh, have a good old scrub and wash my hair and uh, get my books. I've just only got a, there's only a few orders. I post Monday, Wednesday and Friday by the way and uh, there's only a few orders today but it, it'll be an excuse to drive over to the post office uh, in Ballyfarnan and then call into the garage and see if Frank, the, my mechanic, can sort out the car. Hopefully it's not going to be too big a job. So, um, and then when I come back, I would think that a lot of the snow would have melted if the sun is doing its job properly, which it is, because it's shining beautifully. And then I might go down into the fairy woods and do a bit more planting. I've got plans for a few more hardwood trees. So I'll nip down to Ardcarn and see if you've got any more bare-rooted trees left. And I shall buy a few of those and uh, get them planted. So, once again, <laughs> because I've gone off at a tangent. <laughs> Blessings to you all and have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful day. Don't let anything get you down. Your life is too precious. Your journey is too sacred to even be bothered with people who are going to pull you down. Just don't. <laughs> Blessings to you all. <laughs>